stochastic terrorism. Uh, but na- make no mistake about it, that's what this is about. Um, of course, you know, I thought today, oh man, Monday I get to cover the I hate Taylor Swift post, which we're going to cover today because I think that's all part of this scheme too. That's right. Donald Trump is a domestic terrorist. That's what he is. And this, all, all of this, regardless if you believe that the assassinations are staged or someone paid these people to do this, whatever you believe about that, whatever your views are, maybe, maybe you're like, oh, it's the Secret Service or, you know, the, the derp state, whatever the fuck your, your angle is on these assassination attempts. But the fact remains that this all stems from one place and one place only. Donald Trump not conceding in 2020. All of it. Every single one of these events have a through line back to his dangerous lie about how the election was stolen from him and he did not concede. And transfer power peacefully. Come come to January 6th. It'll be wild. Remember? Proud boys stand back and stand by. The proud boys are in Springfield, Ohio, folks. Hmm. Familiar? Based on what... J.D. Vance says is a fucking fabricated story that he created so that the media would pay attention to black Haitian migrants in Ohio because they want to stoke fear. They want to gym up stochastic terrorism. Well, when you start a bonfire and you start throwing gasoline on that bonfire that is not a good idea but then you start throwing rockets in this bonfire you never know where it just might come out you might catch one of the rockets yourself And I believe that's where we're at in this saga. Yes. The fact that Donald Trump keeps lying, dangerously lying, by the way, because it's not just about the Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio. Another dangerous lie that this son of a bitch keeps telling is that children are sent to school and given sex change operations at the school without the parents' consent, which is wildly fucking untrue. He wants this type of fucking violence. He wants this type of chaos. It's the reason why he fucking post, I hate Taylor Swift, knowing that she's had to shut down concerts because of terrorist threats. He's a fucking terrorist. No better than Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un, or Muammar Gaddafi. Osama bin Laden. I'm saying it. Fuck him. Fuck him. Oh, but Tony, aren't you stoking the violence? No! No, the left is not stoking the violence by pointing out his fucking fascism. Their fucking wet dream of Trump's Project 2025? That fucking Nazi manifesto that was written by the fascist foundation themselves and that goddamn Goebbels, Kevin Roberts. Because we're pointing out the truth about your rhetoric. Pointing out the truth about your fucking lies and your false narratives. To try to upend our fucking constitutional republic. To turn it into some sort of fucking theocratic monarchy. Fuck you. Just because we're pointing it out, you think that's the reason why there's violence? 
Maybe, just maybe, stop being fucking Nazis and we won't call you Nazis. Because I listened to Glenn Beck yesterday in a Twitter space go on and on and on and on about how the left and the media is calling Trump fucking Hitler. Well, listen up, Glenn, when the swastika fits, motherfucker. And it is really rich to hear Glenn Beck talk about how, oh, you're stoking political violence by by somehow making Trump into Hitler, when for three fucking years on Fox News, that cocksucking son of a bitch made Obama into the Fourth Reich, showing showing historical footage of Nazi Germany and comparing it to Barack Obama's administration. On Fox News, it's the reason why they fucking, that crank lost his goddamn job at Fox News. Glenn Beck. So spare me the bullshit, Glenn, you fucking pussy. Because then Glenn comes back on and realizes the errors of his ways because he said a lot of shit. And let me tell you something. If you're out there and you want to cut some clips and fucking bury Glenn Beck in his own words, they're right there on that fucking Twitter space. Because Glenn obviously gets really embarrassed when they invited Laura Loomer up to be on the the, the dais with him and speak alongside him as if they were both supporting Trump. Glenn got really fucking annoyed and embarrassed because he had to share the stage with that fucking lunatic Laura Loomer. Which I believe is probably partly behind the fucking Springfield, Ohio stochastic terrorism lie. It's a lie, and it's terrorism. That's what it is, J.D., you motherfucker. So let's get this straight. This isn't the left pumping violent rhetoric. The left's talking about registering to vote. The left is getting fucking signatures on petitions in states to make sure to codify women's rights for an, a, a, a constitutional amendment on the ballot. They're phone banking, they're door knocking, they're sending postcards that we're telling you to check your registration because Democrats and liberals in this country and people who aren't fucking MAGA are part of the MAGA cult know that the way you win in democracy is with ballots, not with bullets, bitch. So all this whining and boo-hooing about how the left has created this issue, fuck you. You can go to fucking hell straight there, bitch. Straight. All the way the fuck off. All the way. All of them. All the fucks you can fuck off. Because this violence, no matter where the gun barrel is pointed, is stoked from one source and one source only. Only one. Donald fucking Trump. Every single bit of it. Time after time after time. Calling, calling Americans vermin. Saying that Black and brown people be here are, are are poisoning our blood, which is straight from my struggle, Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler. Talking about mass deportations, rounding people up, as Stephen Miller is talking about a denaturalization process where they want to strip people of their citizenship if they don't like them, whatever the reason. Writing Trump's Project 2025, the, the, the most un-American document in, in this country's history. Laying out how they can turn our fucking democratic constitutional republic into a theocratic monarchy. So that way they can rule and reign over us, the people, the working class. Because we just ain't smart enough to know what's good for us. Fuck you. And somehow us pointing out those facts is us stoking violence. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
almost seems that's what Hitler said in Nazi Germany, because that's what he did say. Any kind of resistance against their their fucking style of fascism in 1930s Germany was met with whining and victimese. Oh, look, it's the Jews causing all this. They're the vermin poisoning our blood here in Germany. And those gay people and the trans, we need to get rid of them. Their moral succubus on the society of Germany. Sound familiar? Huh? Fuck, I don't even have to go into the details of the dog, cat, and geese story. This whole, oh, they're eating dogs and cats, totally fucking debunked. So they moved to one man holding two geese in a town that wasn't Springfield, Ohio. He just happened to be black. So they called him Haitian, which he's not. And the reason why he was carrying the two fucking geese in the picture is because the Department of Conservation asked him to remove them from the road. So they didn't damage property like a vehicle. That's how roadkill works. How the fuck don't we know this shit? And also, how don't we know that geese, geese are violent motherfuckers. You don't just go sneak up on a goose. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Have you been around geese? You just don't sneak up on those some bitches. They're mean old bastards. They got really strong necks, really hard beaks. They will fuck you up. I've watched people have to kick geese off a kid. Because the kid thought, oh yeah, look at the birdie. No, uh-uh, you don't want to fuck with him. They're sunny. They will chase you around and beat your ass. But to think... To think that wild game in this country being eaten is somehow some somehow demonic. When white people all over this fucking country, especially in the South, especially in the country, they hunt quail, they hunt pheasant, they hunt duck, they hunt geese, and they fucking eat them. They hunt rabbit, they hunt squirrel, they hunt snapping turtles, and they fucking eat them. This is very well known and very well documented in almost every state's Department of Conservation. If they were conservative, maybe they would understand the root words. Huh? Probably fucking not, though. They can't even understand that the reason why there's political violence in this country is because Donald Trump keeps stoking it. And just because... The last two assassination attempts, and I put quotes around it because I'm really not sure at this point. I don't I don't know. I don't know if they're actually assassination attempts or they're staged, who they're staged by, if they were paid, who they were paid by. All those are questions out in the open. But the question that is not out in the open, besides a bunch of brainless fucking Trump humping Cheeto fuck nuggets, is who's causing the fucking political violence? Who's calling and, and stoking the political violence? The president of the United States, the actual president of the United States, Joe Biden this morning, came out in front of the cameras and said, thank God he's okay. Because I'm sure that any president anywhere besides Trump, there's no, no thing that terrifies them more than people pointing rifles at politicians. People we elected to represent us. It just seems kind of funny. Because when you look at these two last, a quote, assassination attempts, and I'm putting quotes around it because I am unsure, definitely unsure about the fucking first one. But isn't it weird? Very fucking weird. 
that it is disgruntled Trump supporters and former MAGA cult members who are trying to pick someone off just seems fucking weird to me. Or is it that weird? I don't know. The good news is, is that this uh, this recent shooter, what's, what's his name? Roth, Rath, Ruth, who gives a fuck? This fucking guy. He's a crank. Okay? He's a fucking crank. He's the guy that 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 leaves long dissertations in your DMs and you don't know who the fuck he is and he doesn't know who the fuck you are. But he thinks you'll listen. He's that kind of crank. I got a lot of them. I got a lot of cranks out there. I've seen them. Trust me. This guy was posting on Facebook and Twitter. Now, I actually wasn't able to see his Facebook because uh, Meta took it down almost immediately. But for whatever reason, his Twitter account stayed up for a lot longer than I suspected it would. I took several screenshots, but my main goal was to read through it to see who this son of a bitch was. Because he was posting. And they look like cranky ass posts. It looks like he had no idea how to post on Twitter. No clue. How to make sure people saw what he was tweeting on Twitter. One in particular tweet that he sent out in 2020 was that he, in fact, was a supporter of Donald Trump in 2016. But in the year of 2020, I wonder what was going on at that time. He became disenfranchised from MAGA. Disgruntled with Donald Trump. And not only was he no longer a supporter of Donald Trump. He was wanting Tulsi Gabbard to be the Democratic nominee. That's how serious this son of a bitch was. Not at all. And the reason why is because <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard on the stage of Democratic nominees in the in the primary of 2020, she, she was more of a laughing stock than Andrew Yang. And no one knew who the fuck he was before that point. And then we fast forward to the 2024 primary. He definitely wasn't supporting Biden because he said he didn't support Biden in 2020. He said it out loud that he didn't want Bernie or Biden. He would ha rather have Tulsi. He was on Team Tulsi. What does that tell you? Holy fuck. That's worse than believing that a libertarian can win to be the president of the United States. I'm not shitting you. I wouldn't. Shit, you, you're my favorite turd. But in 2024, he supported Vivek Ramadama Ding Dong and Nikki Haley. Only to probably be disgruntled by Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramadama Ding Dong when they dropped out of the race to be endorsing Donald Trump. Not to mention... The right wing tying him to Ukraine as he's some sort of leftist. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. But apparently, in the Ukrainian Guard, they wouldn't let this son of a bitch in the International Guard. Because he was such a fucking loose cannon. Then the guy was on Facebook trying to recruit people from Afghanistan, soldiers from Afghanistan to be part of the Ukrainian International Guard. Well, fuck, the Ukrainians couldn't trust that the Afghans would be in the, in, in the Ukrainian Guard, so they didn't want Afghans in their fucking military protecting their country. They were scared that the Afghans would end up being Russian spies. But this guy continued to post on Facebook every fucking day, just being an old man screaming at the clouds. A crank. It's no wonder he supported Donald Trump in 2016. The guy wasn't right in the head. But if we decide 
to try to take a view of maybe an alternative timeline to this guy's wild ideas of reality. Imagine this. Imagine in 2020 when Donald Trump got his clock cleaned. And not only his attorney general at the time, Bill Barr, and the Department of Justice, but also all the election officials all around the country said, no, you lost, bitch. There's no sign of mass fraud. You lost. There's a couple cases, like four in Georgia. There's a handful of cases in this state, but that's not out of the norm. You lost. And if he would have conceded, I know. This is a revision of history, but I'm trying to give you a step-by-step of where we got to the, in this timeline and why what happened yesterday happened. And let's say he conceded. Let's say he didn't decide to, to tweet, come to January 6th and be wild. He didn't hold a rally To stoke violence, to stoke political fear. Before they stochastically went to the Capitol and chanted, hang Mike Pence, broke into the Capitol, smeared shit on the walls, by the way, killed police officers, got killed themselves, Ashley Babbitt. Because they crossed boundaries that they should not have been crossing with violence and terror. And then to not attend the inauguration at the same Capitol. Because he's a pussy ass bitch. But let's say he didn't do all that. Let's say he conceded. He took the L on the chin like a real fucking man does. And admit that he lost. Decided that it probably wasn't a good idea to steal classified documents and went to Mar-a-Lago and played golf and had Laura Loomer do whatever Laura Loomer's doing to him. I don't know. Milo Yiannopoulos seems to think that she's sucking her way all the way to the bottom. That's what Milo thinks. That's what he's saying on Twitter. Milo knows Laura Loomer all too well. Even has a whole spreadsheet of her transactions in 2022, apparently. But imagine he would have just went and golfed for a couple of years. And then in 2022, when there was no red wave, nah, Donald Trump could have, maybe there would have been a red wave without Donald. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, if we're doing alternative timelines in 2022, it is likely that there would have been a red wave without Donald Trump in the picture. That he conceded. They would have had some normal fucking policies. Some normal fucking principles to stand on. Other than they wanted Donald Trump to be king. King Dingaling. The dictator of the United States of Trump. And that's what caused them. Not to mention the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And then doubling down. Going balls deep. Into criminalizing women's pregnancies. And banning their privacy in doctor's offices. And going after the LGBTQ community. Time and time again. At the state houses. And in the state executive branches. With governors. Like fucking DeSantis. Imagine if none of that would have happened. And Donald Trump would have run. Like a real fucking man does. Take the loss and rerun and try to have a rematch against Joe Biden. We would be in a totally different situation than we are now. There wouldn't be a Project 2025. The only reason why this shit exists is because the Nazi part out loud, they believe, is serving them properly. And having some fucking lunatic show up at a golf course in Mar-a-Lago to possibly have the chance to pick off someone with a high-powered rifle is exactly what they want. That's exactly the narrative that they want. Because when you're when you're stoking violence, especially political violence, you really don't care what comes out of the other end, right? 
You don't give a shit when you throw that ro- those rockets into that bonfire I was talking about earlier. You don't give a shit where those rockets land. You could care less. Your main goal is to cause chaos for everyone to fear. And maybe, just maybe, they'll make you the person who protects them from that fear. Because you're the one who threw the rockets in the fire. So maybe you have control of the rockets somehow, some way. So let's call this what this is, an assassination attempt, whatever. But it's really stochastic terrorism, and it's the result of that stochastic terrorism. Trump, J.D., creating stories about people in his home state, legal migrants, by the way, such pieces of trash so fucking un-american ridiculously unpatriotic and for anyone out there to act like that donald trump and jd vance's rhetoric and their vitriol had nothing to do with what happened yesterday or what happened in butler pennsylvania well the only way that's true is if someone paid those guys to stage it motherfucker hmm so what are you trying to say Who are you trying to convince and what are you trying to convince them of? Because it looks like to me, two disgruntled MAGA cult members decided that they'd had enough of Donald Trump. And what does it say about Donald Trump's popularity that his disgruntled cult members are trying to pick him off? I don't know. I have no idea what it means. We're going to get into some of this stuff today. And how the Taylor Swift, I hate Taylor Swift, is also stochastic terrorism. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this.